Plus, Prev next, chapter 8 test x tests. Or in Slither and you'll make your real friends. Those cunning folk use any means to achieve their ends JK Rowling. After my brother's episode of heroism, Gon and I, Kirapika and Liario stay together. I sat on top of a crate that smelled strongly of coffee beans with Gon beside me. I've been sighing and sniffing its addicting aroma like a dog on cocaine since I first caught its scent. Kurapika was sat on another crate, reading a book on fucking geometry out of all things to read. Seriously? How can he stay awake reading those? On the other hand, Liario was reading his Playboy magazine on the floor with his back leaning against the ship's edge. The moment Kurapika took out his book, Liario started rooting out for his. It resulted to Kurapika doing a double take and Liario glaring at the blonde as if challenging him to tell him off. Kurapika glanced at us. I shrugged. He sighed and that's it. At a distance, a sailor shouted, shit, followed by a chorus of laughing. Gon stopped swinging his legs and turned towards the sound. I could just see in his eyes that he was curious as Alice about the spectacle. I looked down to my wet clothes and up to the watchtower where the wind was stronger and the sun hotter. I need to go up there and dry. The three boys turned to me. I jumped down and nodded at Kirapika and Liario. Gon followed down next. Want me to come with you? I searched his eyes. My poor brother who just can't stay still was itching to move. I smirked and drawled out race you up there. I bolted off easily climbing and jumping and grabbing my way up. Comma, Jin, Gon laughed as he followed after me. Easily walking the thin beam holding up the sails, I tensed and propelled myself landing on the watchtower's railing. I closed my eyes and let my arms stretch and float up high above my head. I tilted my head back, my spine arched. I took a deep lungful of breath and rolled my neck and shoulders, realizing how tense they've been and still were. The wind, he has hands and he caresses me like the most sensual, elusive and unfaithful lover. Man, I'm such a poet. The ship undulated with an unsung rhythm of the Cian in that moment. I felt everything. I felt the people on this ship milling about, working, laughing and talking. So full of life. I felt the ship as she floated her way through the waves, proud and strong. I heard how her engines worked together. I can sense the fish as they swam beside her giant, carefully distancing themselves from her propellers. And the scent. Down there, it was a mixture of goods, people and perfumes. Up here, it was like I was home again. Back in Whale Island. Soon after, the wind changed yet again. He brought me an array of scents, voices and sounds. We were close. We were reaching port. I hesitantly opened my eyes and saw the blue sky, just as I imagined it in my mind's eye. From my peripheral, I spotted Gon at the same position as me. Hands up in the air and our back arching like a cat. He turned to me and we smiled at each other. Feel better he asked. Yeah I replied, rolling my shoulders back and forth. The ship moved and swam around first, looking for a spot to dock on. Gon and I were content on watching the people. My hand moved and touched his. He grabbed it. I gripped his hands tighter as I tried to ignore the growing weight in my chest as new images assaulted my head. Gone jumping to save the young sailor, the cold purple eyes of a white-haired kid, the hungry yellow eyes of Hisoka, floating scarlet eyes, dark eyes, dying eyes, dead eyes. Strong hands held my shoulders, keeping me steady when I nearly slipped. The ship shook and she finally docked. I heard Gon sigh. You're all dry now. I looked down and pirouetted weakly on my spot, the tails of my scarves fluttering in the wind. I'm safe. We're safe. Yes, Jin. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> We'll be okay he told me softly and I almost believed him. I closed my eyes and willed my heart to stop beating so quickly. I can't think like that Gon. I can't. I can't calm down. I felt Gon's hands turn me towards his chest. I leaned down and rested my head on his shoulder. There's only two people in this world, Gon I whispered. The phrase was oddly familiar like I've heard of it before but can't recall when or where. Was it here or there? Now or before? I felt his hand on my back, drawing comforting overlapping circles. Us, and everyone else he whispered. I don't really know if Gon believed it. Gon was not like me. He belongs in this world. To him, going to the hunter's exam and facing all the challenges we are going to face are normal. He won't see the horrible things. Instead, he'll look at them and be amazed. That is, until he loses Kaido. He also cares a lot for other people. That's why they get attracted to him. Meanwhile, I care a little about them as long as I'm safe and Gon's safe. Then, just then, will I worry about them? The captain walked us out of his ship. He was so weird because his eyes rarely stray from Gon and I. But then, He'll look away first when our eyes meet. Every time he looks down at us, I could tell he knows something we don't. His eyes judged, criticized and calculated Gon's and certainly my moves. I don't know if Gon didn't notice or if he pointedly ignored this old man staring. Is this guy, perving on my brother? I narrowed my eyes at him. He looked down at me and then smiled forcedly at Gon. I pursed my lips. Damn it. Is Gon that fucking irresistible? Should I give him another spray? He told us, or mostly Gon, about going to that cedar tree on top of the mountain. There. We will find the navigators who were meant to lead us to the examination site. Gon thanked the old captain happily and even shook his hands. My eyes had widened at this but calmed myself down. My brother was just being polite. After saying our goodbyes, with Gon loudly shouting his goodbyes while I merely gave him a deep bow and a small thank you for safely bringing us here. 
We left the captain and met up with Kirapika and Liario who were by the bus station looking at the city's map while they waited for us. That's strange, that tree is the exact opposite from where we are supposed to have the test at. You sure you didn't misheard him, gone? Nope. The captain clearly said that there's a house by that tree. Liario growled as he thought while Kirapika said something about the importance of gathering and keeping data for hunters. I crossed my arms and tried to control my growing headache and the fact that a smelly old man was stalking us. He smelt like old puke and cement spray he used to cover up the smell. Fool. I'll be able to smell him from a mile. I turned to stare off at the cedar tree. It looks so far away, too. I massaged my temple. Where had all my strength and bravado gone? Here I started when a cold drink was suddenly pressed against my other temple. I looked up and found Kirapika's gentle gray eyes staring back at me. I sighed and couldn't help but to close my eyes in relief. Thanks. You're welcome he looked like he wanted to say something more but stopped himself. I offered him a small smile. I feel a little headache. But I'll be fine. Come to think of it, I haven't drank anything since yesterday. His eyes widened. Again, he opened his mouth to say something, only to flinch when Liario's loud mouth shouted at us, Ermi, specifically. What? You're dehydrated. Little girl, why haven't you been drinking? Don't you know water is the most important? More important than food. Your body is 70% water, your brain is 75% water, and your blood is 80% water. The water you drink is used for your digestion, breathing, bone building, body temperature, and waste management and basically everything your body does. That's why you have to drink and replenish your body's water. Yes, Dr. Liario blushed and tried to cover it up with his sunglasses. I know. I know. I just forgot, I guess. Sorry, I opened the lid and drank about half of the water, then I handed it back to Kirapika. W well. That's good. Then Liario coughed and turned his red face away. Here. Have some too just as the blonde was about to shake his head, I pushed the bottle to his chest. Don't be such a girl. You'll need it, I said and turned away from him towards my brother. Gon was smiling at me proudly. Are you thirsty? I asked him, looking around for a vending machine or a small shop. No, I'm fine. He jumped and began skipping towards the tree. I followed ignoring Liario's goodbyes. He'll come with us. I thought, ignoring the tiny voice that mocked me. What if he doesn't? That'd mean you ruined the plot, didn't you? But Kirapika and Liario followed and I smiled despite myself. Soon after we walked a completely empty path, we entered this village that looked so full of things except for people. I tensed, itching to draw my twin knives just to make me feel a little better. A crow caught overhead. Man, this place looks abandoned. A gust of wind swept towards us, bringing sense of a group of people, ladies, from what I could tell from the strong mixing sense of talcum powder and flowery scented colons. Except of course, there were males who happened to like powder and flowers. I know a certain red hair who loves flowers, roses in particular. In a moment, an impromptu stage was built in front of us and an old woman plus some funny masked and cloaked figures lined up behind her, holding different types of instruments. My eye twitched as someone sounded the cymbals and the woman welcomed us to her to answer quiz. Come. There will be no fighting here, only of course if you wish to fight amongst yourselves she pointedly looked at me. I looked behind and found Liario and Kirapika staring at me with dumbfounded expressions. What I drawled then resheathed my weapons and took steps back beside Gon. I was fully expecting an ambush there. Maybe it's too early I laughed drilly. Man, Liario whistled. Kirapika smiled as he sighed, ever accepting. Remind me not to get you cross, Jin Liario said. I grinned weakly and we all gave our attention to the old woman. Your mother and your lover have been kidnapped, you can only save one. Which one will you save? One. Your mother. Two. Your lover. I closed my eyes tiredly. Another test? Troublesome. What's supposed to be the answer to this? Because there's no right or wrong. Depending on the person whichever he loves more or hates it less? If I were made to choose between Gon and Ging. I'll choose Gon in an instant, of course. But then, Gon will hate me for abandoning Ging. So, if I'm feeling kind that day, I'll save Ging too. What if it was Mito and Gon? Damn, that's tough. The answer will be that I'll stretch myself then and die saving those two. In short, there's no answer to this question. Sometimes, silence is the best answer. My breath stilled and I opened my eyes in realization. I turned to Kirapika but he was too busy thinking. From my peripheral, I caught the woman's stare. I turned to her. Again, I was accosted with seeing somebody else's eyes look back at me as if again, they know what I'm thinking and that they know something I don't. I opened my mouth to answer. Don't dare answer. Your company should be able to come up with the correct answer as well or you all get disqualified. My jaw dropped. What? I flinched as Liario exclaimed what, and shouted out just unfair it was. Liario, please keep it down. My eardrums are close to bursting I droned and massaged forehead. I smirked again, the action reminding me of Mito. Now I know how she feels all the time. Keep IT down. This old woman. What kind of? I turned my attention to the approaching man behind Liario. It wasn't difficult to know he was coming. He dragged his feet lazily. About time. I took note of the two swords strapped on his back. The stinky old fool told us to hurry or he'll have his question first. Not really in a hurry, it was easy for all of us to agree and watched the man as he answered the question right away. Telling us something about, 
telling the old lady what she wanted to hear as if the said old lady wasn't right in front of him. Stupid. From his answer, I can judge that this man had never loved or cared for anyone so much before. I wondered where was his mother or if he had any friends, but thought that it was too pointless to think of such a thing. He probably thought himself smart but I could literally taste his wicked intent from where I was. If God just looked away from his deep thoughts, I'm sure he'll taste it too. He used something sinister. He left, waving goodbye at us as he continued his way towards the long empty road. The old woman changed the question into choosing between one, your son or two, your daughter. At this, I found Kirapika asking me if I knew the answer silently with his eyes. His gray eyes softened when he saw what he wanted and relaxed a little. I sighed and let him calm our oldest friend down. Liario, volatile, short-tempered. A mission type nen. In the end, we passed with little spectacle caused by Liario and Kirapika, of course. They're like water and fire and their interactions are almost funny. I looked down at my brother who was still in deep thought. I crouched and watched his childish face as he frowned and chew on his lips. I wondered if he was choosing between King and me, or Mito and me. Is he thinking of the same thing as I did? If yes, what's taking him so long? In the end, he sat himself on his bottom and sighed. He looked at me, eyes sad and frustrated. It's no use. I can't think of an answer at all, I smiled at his confused and lost expression. You're still thinking about that? Asked Cleario. The quiz is finished, Gonkirapika said with a patient smile. Yeah? But what if it really happened? What if I had to choose? What do I do then, my sweet, naive big brother asked everyone and no one? It was a rhetorical question. One that had no solid answer. I ruffled Gon's spiky hair. Pieces of dried gel got stuck onto my hands. Sis, he whined and rearranged his style. There, there, I patted his head. He slapped at my hands. Well done, Gon. You've been thinking very hard, I told him sweetly. Hey hey, what's that supposed to mean, he pouted. Liario, Kirapika and I laughed. The doors beside the stage opened and we faced a dark tunnel. I froze momentarily before I schooled my expression. The tunnel will bring you straight to the navigator's home in about two hours, the old woman said. There were thank yous given and a heartfelt apologize from Liario. I paused and listened and when I heard his voice, uncharacteristically serious and dare I say, manly. He's handsome when he's quiet, I guess. I bowed and then followed the guys. I heard the doors closed and it suddenly felt like walking in the middle of nothing with only that door of light as your goal. I blindly searched for anything else in our surroundings but nothing was there with us. Remember that void. I felt my breath hitched. I fisted my hands and concentrated on the feeling of my nails digging into my palms. My thoughts going back and forth to the next card I haven't seen and will probably see next. A man watching in horror as his arms dissolve into red, pink and white petals, and that void, that floating mass of darkness where the souls of dead wait. This hunter's exam is just starting and it's already making me go crazy. What will happen to me when I face Hisoka, Kralo and the rest of this world? Turn into a pile of bloody mush and you? When we came out of the tunnel, we found ourselves in the middle of a forest. I shared a look with Gun and we grinned at each other. Now this, this place is like our second home. I looked around. They said the navigators live by the cedar tree and they're the ones who will lead us to the exam site. Either this is the exam site now, or this is really just the navigator's home. If it was the first, then I'll have to get ready for an ambush. Why? Because that's like the main theme of a villainous exam kill everyone until one was left standing. I hope it was the second. I wonder if I can really commit suicide. If this was really their home, then we'll just have to find them and ask them to lead us to the site. But then again, one does not do one a favor without something in return here. Like the captain and the old lady, they helped us after we've done some kind of test. Therefore, there will be a test. Beware of the magical beast Liario read from a sign. Magical beast. What the hell? Where are we? Old lady said we'll find the house in two hours. Well, it's been two hours, two hours ago. Liario, didn't you understand the sign? Will you be quiet? Kirapika whispered, exasperated. Horizontal ellipsis. Oh. There it is. Gon pointed out a lone wooden cabin house underneath the said cedar tree and together, we climbed up the front steps. The forest seemed unnaturally still. I took a subtle sniff. As we neared the door, the scent of musk, fur and blood got stronger. Excuse me? Hello, Gon and Kirapika nodded at each other and opened the door. I stepped in behind Liario, one of my throwing knives ready to be baptized. The three boys froze and took a step back. Peering from Liario's back, I tensed and prepared to throw a knife to the magical beast's head. There's a woman in its arms, Gon shouted. As if to brandish its prize, the beast showed a young brunette to us. She looked weakly at us. When she saw me with my knife, her eyes widened a little fraction before she was carried away by the magical beast. My wife. P please. Liario leapt into action and took long steps towards the injured navigator. He opened his suitcase and began addressing the man. Gone and Kirapika ran towards the window. Gone. But he was gone. Jin. Stay and protect them both. Liario. We'll leave him to you. Kirapika shouted before he leapt out from the window and into the night. Your wife will be fine. Here, let me clean your wounds. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Are you injured anywhere else? The navigator shook his head no. My wife, my wife, please. Calm down, I promise you, 
Those two are amazing. They'll save your wife, no doubt. And Jin right here, she's awesome with her knives. I feel sorry for those beasts now Liario Suda the young husband then winked at me. I smirked at him and started throwing my knife up to the air then twirling them around and between my fingers. Doing this was fun. But not as fun when I was practicing them before. This was the reason why my fingers were full of cuts too, aside from calluses. You can't call yourself a knife throwing expert if you can't do this simple trick after all. Liario paled. However, as we watched the knife warily. Jin, stop showing off. I shrugged and placed the knife back to its sheath on my left leg. Do you need help? Can you move that chair here so he can sit down while I bandage him up? Okay I sauntered towards the flip chair while leering at the young red-eyed man. I watched as his Adam's apple undulated. I schooled my expression to a worried one when Liario looked up. The navigator tensed. Lifting up the chair easily, I placed it behind the young man. Liario kindly helped him to the chair. Can I have your arm? Please. Liario wiped the dried blood and started bandaging up his patient's arm with such care. I watched as he did his job with a small comforting smile. Looking up to the guy then to his work. There you go Liario said then rummaged his suitcase. I have some calming medicine here. Jin, can you, Jin, what are you doing? Oh, my hand suddenly felt the need to grab a knife and press it against this man's neck. Jin, are you out of? Liario, you've bandaged his cut. Now, let me interview our victim when the older man didn't look convinced. I softened my expression. Please, Liario looked away. P please, W what said the young navigator. Shh, I pressed the blunt part of the knife deeper to his skin. Liario flinched and stepped closer. Now, let me gather my thoughts. You were attacked by the beast. The man nodded, sweating now. I made a sympathetic face. A-W-H, that's sad I said in an overly saccharine tone. Jin I ignored Liario's growling tone. Sorry, well just wondering, why do you smell like her? What chorus the two? Well you see, gone and I have a very good sense of smell I breathe in his scent. Also, why does your wife seem a little bit comfy with that she-beast? Not to mention you don't look worried enough. After all, you're here sitting with your legs still intact while your wife was kidnapped by a beast. If it was me, I'll be running to catch that beast already. It doesn't even matter if I can't find them by smell, sound or not. I'll be too desperate that I'll run after it. If not, a normal defenseless man will not be able to stop fidgeting in his seat or pacing the room. It's either you don't love her enough to be brave, you're not really married or you're not really in danger. After all, who will willingly live in a dangerous place like this if there wasn't anything big in it for them? Hmm. And that wound seems fresh. How long have you been fighting with her? Was she scared to hurt you so you did it yourself? Hmm. His red eyes flashed and narrowed. Then slowly, the man's face contorted into a foxy grin. I took out another knife in a flash and placed it against him. 